We gather together at the beginning of a new day. Joining our, our voices, our intentions to pay our respects to the Triple Gem, to the qualities of Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. In the words of the traditional chanting, we pay our respects, but these are also very direct practical guides for our, our practice. To take refuge in Buddha is to, to choose to be awake. Buddha means the one who, who knows, the one who is awake. So to take refuge in Buddha is not just to pay respects to Gautama Buddha who lived so long ago, but it's to set the intention to wake up, <coughs> to take refuge in knowing, in awareness, rather than believing in our thoughts, dwelling in our sense impressions and opinions. To take refuge in Dhamma is not just to trust the words of Gautama Buddha. The Dhamma means nature, the way things are, the fundamental reality of things. So to take refuge in Dhamma means to attune the heart to the way things are, not the way we think things should be, or could be, or might have been. But how it is. It's a choosing a fundamental, a radical realism. To lay aside our preferences, our fears, our anxieties. To let go of self-view, to let go of taking things personally, and to reflect upon this body, this mind, this world, as attributes of nature. <laughs> Refuge in Sangha doesn't just mean trusting or following the example of those who have awakened to the truth. But just as the Buddha and the Dhamma have internal aspects, taking refuge in Sangha also has an internal quality. Sangha means the, the unified assembly a harmonious group. Those who take refuge in Sangha means to choose the wholesome, that in the heart which loves the good, which delights in reality, that delights in, in the kusala, the wholesome, the noble, the worthy, To trust that in our heart which loves the good, this is to take refuge in Sangha. In the second part of the, the chanting, a lot of the uh, explanations 
point to how it is we can work with our minds work with our attitudes to help that taking of refuge to be fulfilled how we can help ourselves to be awake how we can help these lives to be in tune with reality in tune with nature how we can help ourselves to incline towards the good towards the, the noble here in the the morning chanting this second part of the of these traditional verses it points to the application of the insight into anicca dukkha anatta the experience of unsatisfactoriness how common that is how universal how ordinary not getting what you want being separated from what you like having to be with what you dislike ordinary everyday moment by moment experiences for everyone here is dukkha separation from what you like having to bear with what you dislike not getting what you want here it is And the Buddha uses this uh, simple analysis, simple division of experience into what are called the five khandhas or the five groups. Simple division of the aspects of body and mind to help us to, to change our perspective <coughs> upon experience. To change the way that we, we see ourselves we think about ourselves and the world <coughs> normally we judge ourselves to be a woman or a man we say we're English or American or Sri Lankan or Thai or French and German We think of ourselves as old or young, extrovert, introvert, <coughs> success or a failure. We create our personalities. We believe in our personal stories, our personal histories. And define ourselves by these categories. I am a monk, I'm a lay person, I'm tall, I'm short. I'm healthy, I'm unhealthy. But in picking up the, the Buddha's teachings and these practices, we can revision the way that we see things. So rather than witnessing our, our life and our world through the lens of self view, Sakaya Ditti. through the lens of blindly, unconsciously believing I am the body, I am the personality the teachings the practice of meditation development of insight helps us to revision things and these teachings point directly to that Rupang Anichan the body is changing form is impermanent this body other bodies bodies are in a state of change vedana anicca feelings change sensations of like dislike comfortable uncomfortable neutral 
Sanya Anicha. Perceptions change. Perceiving light, perceiving sound. Hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Sankara, Anicca, mental formations, moods, emotions, ideas, memories, the whole realm of mental activity, thoughts, emotions. This is all Sankara. It's in a state of change. Vinyanang Anichang, consciousness, the, s- the simple process of cognizing an experience, Anichang. An experience begins and ends, a moment of recognition, a moment of cognizing, begins and ends. Vinyanang Anichang, consciousness changes. The mental act of discriminating this from that begins and ends. So rather than dwelling upon the feeling of, oh, I wish I didn't have a, a cough, or I have this pain in my knee, an itch on my shoulder. To consider, oh, That's the sound of a cough, the feeling of an itch. It's anicca, it rises and passes away. It's hearing, rising and passing away. The impression of this body, arising and passing away. Or the sound of someone else's body, arises, passes away. So rather than dwelling upon the aspects of self and other, like and dislike, me here or that, or them out there, we consider rupanga nichang, vedana nicha. Feeling is changing, perception is changing, the body is changing. Allowing the the way that the world is apprehended is received. Allowing that to to shift, inviting that to shift, so we don't perceive this life or other lives, the world, in terms of self view, self and other. But seeing these all as aspects of nature, coming, and going, changing. Similarly, rupang anatta, the body is not self. The world of form, this body, other bodies, these are all aspects of nature. Breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide. Moment by moment. Breathing in the moisture, the mist of the early morning. Breathing it out, contributing to the the airs of Hertfordshire, the shared air of the shrine room. Breathing in, breathing out, we share the atmosphere. It's not self, it's not my oxygen, my carbon dioxide. It's not monastic carbon dioxide once I've breathed it out. It's just the elements of nature, coming, going, transforming. Vedana anatta, feelings are not self. 
pleasant feeling, painful feeling, neutral feeling. These are just the activities of uh, the nerve endings, the reception of pleasure and pain in our, our nervous system. When these are explored through, through insight, with clarity, no owner can be found. When, there, when you look for a, a me, an I, who is the doer, the owner, it can't be found. Sanya anatta. Perception is not self. It's hearing. The attitude that I'm hearing, I'm seeing, the I, the me, the mine, is additional to that. We develop the meditation, develop the quality of wise attention, investigation, to explore, to see, to know directly. It really is just hearing, just smelling seeing. The feeling of me who's the, the hearer, me the one who's seeing. When that's opened up, when that's explored, no me or I can truly be found. Sankara anatta, mental formations. Emotions, moods, memories, plans, intentions, even choices. When there's a, a deep looking, a deep exploration, even the choices that are made, no owner, no doer, no chooser can be found. Vinyanang anatta, consciousness is not self. This refers to that the deeply rooted habitual perception that I am experiencing. This is my mind. I am remembering. I am hearing. I am feeling. identification with cognizing. It's I who know, I who think, I who feels. It's vinyanang anatta. Consciousness is not self, a cognizing, even though it really feels like there's a me who remembers, a me who thinks. When that feeling of meanness and I-ness is opened up, that too is revealed as a, another passing impression, a pattern of nature, like the sound of a pigeon crowing in the early morning. The feeling of I is no more solid and permanent, personal. The sound of a bird or a, or a passing plane Now, these are not things to be believed or just taken on trust because a, a person in the role of teaching says them but these are tools for us to use to explore our experience during the day to pick up those impressions of I and me and mine What we hear, what we see, what we smell, what we taste, what we touch, what we remember, what we think, what we plan. We use these reflections on anicca, dukkha, anatta to open up every sense impression, open up the flow of experience to see what's really here. 
and in that opening up, that revelation, revealing how experience really works, what's here. In that opening up, that revealing, there's a liberation. In that moment of recognizing, oh, this thought has no owner. Just like the sound of a passing plane is not mine. This memory is not mine either. Aha! That shift in the heart, that aha, that is, the, that is inside itself. In that moment, there's a freedom, a clarity, a peacefulness. This is the insight, the vipassana, the inward seeing. That's the, the aim of this kind of practice, this change of heart, the change of vision. So through the day, as we have our periods of formal meditation and informal meditation, develop this change of vision, this revisioning of the flow of experience as consistently, steadily as you can. Reflecting on anicca, uncertainty, transiency, Reflecting on unsatisfactoriness, how no single thing can permanently please us. And particularly reflecting on anatta, letting go of self-view around thoughts, sense impressions, ideas, memories, around the body. To see the habits of self forming and to let them go. And when they're let go of, notice what remains, what's here when the clinging stops. And a thought is let go of. A sound or a sensation is let go of. A memory or a, an idea. What's present when the clinging stops? To know that. To open to that directly. And to, to see. How when the heart is free of clinging, there's a spaciousness, a brightness, a simplicity, a clarity. That's always here, whenever the clinging stops, whenever the identification, whenever I and me and mine is dropped, when that's seen through, there's purity radiance and peacefulness. So we'll close with the um, chanting these uh, verses on the unconditioned. It's on these separate sheets that were distributed yesterday. So uh, this is talking about what is present when a vijja is not and the whole collection of 12, uh, 12 um, links is not obscuring reality. 
So this is the um, the uh, referring to the underlying dhamma, the underlying reality when uh, uh, um, that's ever present, but uh, which gets obscured by avijja, pachaya, sankara, and uh, the whole um, dependent origination. And so this is um, a very useful reflection. This is. Um, a, a, on the suggestion of Lumpur Sumato, he, he was, uh, before he left in the last few months, he encouraged this being sort of printed up and included in the chanting book. And so, um, this, uh, this particular version I, I commissioned from, um, uh, Melanie Abbasra, who was the one who did the original, um, uh, formation of the kind of, um, melodic forms for the chanting book. And so, uh, I asked her if she could do, uh, uh uh, put it, an arrangement or set this up so this could be chanted as well so this is um in the uh, the forthcoming edition of the chanting book this will be included uh, so this is a, a a slightly new version so probably most of you are not very familiar with it but um we'll do it a few times um, over the next few days so you can uh, digest it and and get it um well embedded this is a uh, so because it's always it's good to remember that it's not just um, when we talk about the four noble truths and the arising of suffering, we can t- tend to think that the, that um, dukkha is the fundamental reality <laughs> of of life or experience. But actually, rather than than dukkha or unsatisfactoriness being the the basic um, uh, universal truth, it's the this uh, the unconditioned, the unborn, the un- originated, which is uh, uh, the um, the uh, that which underlies and which is the um, the fabric of everything.